guys, welcome back to the channel. So we hope you guys all had an amazing week. Last week we started on the front suspension and this week we're gonna start doing the rear suspension. Like we said last week, the wheels and tires, the tires showed up, we were waiting on the wheels and they showed up. So we are gonna to go to um, Weeps Off Road to his dad's shop and mount the wheels and tires. Then we'll put those on here and he's got these little guys in his Yeah, hand. so also in this video, I don't know how far exactly we're gonna get in this video, but I would like to get the back wheels and tires on it, do the rear suspension, the framework, and also mount the body to the chassis. So we got some cool little cab mounts, and also we got some rubber pucks to put in it, but we'll get into more of that once we get to that. We're trying to make it to the Rats at the Beaver March 17th, but Without us rambling on, let's go get some wheels and tires and uh, see what we get into. Here we go. It's like Christmas. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh yeah. Those are gonna look good. Mm-hmm. They're bigger than the car. <laughs> well. I guess let's mount these things. We have the tires over there and uh, see what these things look like. These tires. No, not these. That's what you wanted. <laughs> I know. For the price, we settled for the other ones, our Toyo proxies, and something like this was another $100 more. So we're just going to use the Toyo proxies that we got. Thing is, they're directional too. So we got to watch. All right, here are our tires. <laughs> Lube them up. So we gotta watch how we put them on the Crosley. You mean? Well, we gotta Since watch they're directional. Because they're directional. So if this, was... one, this one won't matter, but the next one we gotta make sure we put them okay. right, or it's gonna be going the wrong way. Okay. So this one don't matter. But we got our wheel mounted upside down. Let's try. Fire. Mm -hmm. I wanted to use the fire. Jake says to use the cheetah. There you have it. <laughs> there it goes. There. <laughs> So do we know which way this tire goes? Just like that, don't it? So lay this... it, lay it down on there. Just like that. Nope. Sure. When well, that one... the wheel, the front of the wheel, yeah, put it that way. Put it right. Yep. Put that down over here. Okay. Let me think of it. Yeah, that, that's not what I was thinking, but okay. So that's the outside. The, the, the passenger side. That's right. Well, if it ain't right, we'll do it again. We do it right because we do it twice. <laughs> Almost like I know what I'm doing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, they look good going down the road. Kind of reminds me of a Viking fender. What's that doing? Oh. Where? How do you know? So it says it needs one ounce right here. Huh. So you just put one ounce on it. So there's one ounce, and it's good. It's a, a 20 by 12 Moto Metal Sage wheel, and uh, we ended up using a, I think, let's see, a 305 45 22 inch Toyo Proxy tire. They are directional, so as you can see, one will go on the left side of the car, one will go on the right, but I really like them. Uh, I think they're gonna look sweet. Let's get them mocked up to the we car. We did forget the center caps, but You forgot the center no. caps, not me. <laughs> He told me, grab them center caps. Well, I didn't want to yeah. see him struggling out in the rain pushing the two tires. So I went ahead and pushed one and then we left. Mm -hmm. So the center caps are still <laughs> sitting somewhere there. So go ahead and put this one on the passenger side, your side of the car. And uh, we'll show these people what these things look up against, like, or what they look like up against the car. Yeah, if you didn't realize that it's going to be right hand drive. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not the passenger. Dang, yeah, those look good. What do you think? You like them? Oh, the wheels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you look good, too. Oh, yeah, right. Um, no, I really do like this. I can't wait to see it all together and paint it. So now we realize we are going to have to do the front wheels kind of shiny-ish, black shiny. Um, just We went with these wheels because they're more of a spoke look wheel, just like the front. So that's our reasoning for that, and they're really cool. But... Um, now I forget what I was going to say. So anyways, carry on. Yeah, so the plan is we still got to get the front wheels unbent because in one of the videos we showed you guys that the wheels were um, really bent. And I'll show you guys that again. So as you can see, it is bent. We found a guy to unbend them for us, but we just got to get over there to him and uh, get them unbent. So that's the plan with that. So let's go ahead and put the wheel adapters on this thing and then get these wheels bolted up on it. Man, they look so good. About need more room over here. All right, so I know what you guys are thinking that, why are you guys running wheel adapters on this thing? They don't make a five on four and a half bolt pattern in this wheel that we're using. And instead of using a five on five axle, a five on five axle was gonna be entirely too long. So that's the reason why we went with this five on four and a half rear end. The rear end is out of a 98 Ford Ranger, if I remember right. So we're just gonna put these um, two inch or inch and a half wheel spacers on it. Hopefully they don't stick out too much, but it is gonna be what it's gonna be. So let's- uh, No, I thought about doing like baby, um, like mud, not mud flap, but um, what are they? Baby wheel fenders? Fender flares? Yeah. We are not putting fender flares on this. Okay, then you're putting AC in it. AC? You can't even open. If it's raining, you're not going to be able to open those windows if it rained and then all that crap gets in there. Well, we have an AC compressor on the front, so I could put AC in it. Okay. It's got an AC compressor. And then once you do that, I'll know that you can do it and put it in my truck. <laughs> and wipers. I can see. You'll be able to see out of this one. No, we can also wear it around. I won't say that. <laughs> Oh, is she on there? Something. What? Uh, something's on there. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to figure out how to pick up the axle, and Jim 
had this idea. <laughs> Is it heavy? <laughs> Wide. Are you kidding me? You think it's too wide? <laughs> Do you know what I drive? <laughs> All right, now that we have the wheels and tires, we need to figure out where everything goes. <laughs> well, I think we got, we're going to start off with getting the body as far as we can to the motor. So there's plenty of room, but you know, drop one of them on your head. No. So now that we got the body up to the frame, we're going to go ahead and start putting these cross members in. And this is going to be one of our main cross members, and then there's going to be another one. But I'm not quite sure where it's going to go until we start building the structure to go over the rear axle. So we're going to start with this one. I'm going to take a square and square it off. In the previous videos, you guys seen us messing with the rocker panels on this thing. So uh, the rocker panels were completely shot, so we put a piece of 2 by 6 piece of uh, rectangle tubing as the rocker panels on both sides and that's also going to serve for our structure of this car because there was nothing there and no metal was going to be able to be welded to the rocker panels so we had to build new rocker panels for our floor joists to weld to so I think we're going to put it about right there so then when the body comes off it clears our transmission mount so let's go ahead and The seats. Front floor joist is in the car. I got it welded up. It's all square. So now that we got it, we're going to be able to start figuring out where we're going to put the other cross member and where the frame is going to start going up and over the rear axle. But as usual, I come into a problem. First off, I got some of these control arms off of a Jeep Wrangler and this is what we're going to be using to use for the rear suspension to cut uh, cost down on high joints and stuff like that. We're going to use something that is pretty available at any junkyard. So these are off a of JK Jeep. So like a 2006 to 2018, I want to say the years are. And then these here are the lower front control arms for a Jeep JL. So 18 the current. All right. Well, here's the problem. We're going to take these here. Come on inside. We're going on a field trip. All right, so now that we're in the car, we'll be able to, this thing is so tiny, I don't think you guys realize how small this thing is in here. <laughs> All right, so the frame is gonna come up like this, over towards you guys, and then down. So my plan is to take these control arms here and make a little ear that comes off the frame, and then the axle will move up and down on it. So I got these brackets here that my buddy Shane made for us, and they're gonna go on the front of this axle like this. And here's the problem that I just figured out. All right, Hannah's gonna hold that. If we put that where it goes and this control arm here, we're on the door opening of the car. So instead of buying a bunch of material, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press these sleeves out, cut this uh, control arm and recope it and then put it back on. And then that'll allow this control arm to be on the back side of this door opening. It's always literally Okay. It's always literally something. Well and the thing is custom. it would work for me because my seat is gonna be all the way forward yeah, like when I'm here. driving. But comfortably for a tall man, that's yeah, not gonna work. Yeah so I'm five eleven and come around here and we'll show him through this opening. Oh gosh. So pretty much this bracing here will be the back wall of the car. It'll probably come up to here and then this will all be open. So underneath these windows down will be boxed in. So from the windows up, you'll be able to see. And still we got to figure out where to put the fuel tank. So it might be in the very back. Yeah. Right so pretend this is the wall, this X bracing. And I'll be setting in it pretty much like this. So that's a pretty good distance and I still got room for my pedals and stuff and then Hannah she'll, she'll be perfectly fine she'll be 
she'll be like, <laughs> no. she'll be up here. She's got an extended cab. But, so like in her truck, the passenger seat don't slide because it don't need a slide. But the driver's side, I don't ever really drive her truck, but it had to be able to slide back and forth Yeah, we on had to put it on tracks because... Yeah, she literally drives it like this, <laughs> and it's an extended cab. It's a single cab truck, so basically same principle in this. Like I said, I'll probably be riding about like this. Man, that thing, we gotta get some seats in that. That thing's not comfy no, at all. No, I'm sure it's not. But, so there is another issue. We gotta take care of that, but right now, I think I'm gonna go eat and uh, just do some thinking and then get back on it. But like I said, got one floor joist in, keep moving on to the next, but got to kind of figure out where that next floor joist goes before we can do it. But I guess where we're at now, we can go ahead and start building the frame up from here. Yeah. And then just keep going. So we can straight line it from here. As long as the frame don't go past this door opening, we just go up and over and call it good. I'll tell you. This is what I need to show you. Lemon peppered beef jerky from Bucky's is like the best stuff ever. These are our body mounts and these are our rubber pucks pucks to go in between the body of the car and the frame. I know this is gonna kind of sound silly, but I like using these metal cloak bump stop kits. So these go on the front of a Jeep axle. So whenever the bump stop, these are the bump stop pucks. So it can't come down too far and the tires can't get into your body. I found out these work really good for body bushings. So I'll show you my idea on that real quick. Oh, okay. So now that I got that front floor joist in this is just simply going to go here that's going to go to there and then this body will be officially on rubber oh. and then we'll weld that up but that's how the body will stay in place but yeah these these work really good jeep bump stops for body bushings perfect dang homie dang new screen that's nice i can see everything now We'll probably have to move the body back forward. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Did that get you? Nope, still alive. Corey? Did it get your hand? No. What do you look at it for? Let me see ya. <laughs> Let me see ya. So good. It just jammed it. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Um, good thing I have my face shield on. Yeah. But it didn't blow apart, but it got caught. Um, Got my thumb pretty good. It hurts, but it's still intact. It just um, pushed it up against the bar. Yeah, don't forget, people. Safety third. I had, I had my face shield on though. Yeah, and you could see clearly through that thing. It was nice. Well, no fingers got taken off or anything. So yeah, let's move on. We don't have time for a pity party. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, change of plans. We got hungry, so now. No. But Corey needed something from town, so I'm like, mm, chicken sounds good. Chicken mashed potatoes. Yeah, so we went to KFC and having a little uh, picnic here in the shop. So we stopped at our local Harbor Freight for the tool Corey needed, and right across the road is dinner. Alright, so welcome into the car. Um, Right now we are mocking up the frame. So we have our airbag, but completely compressed. It's about three and a half inches. So we have mocked up an airbag all the way down. We've got the holes, I guess right here. Um, so anyways, we decided we couldn't put it directly on top of the axle because we've got to get to the hole in the bottom of the bag. 
So we're gonna have a bigger bracket, something similar to this made, to where it goes on the front of the axle, and then the bag will sit in here about like this, so we can still get to the hole for the bolt on the bottom. And then um, that way it still gives us plenty of room for the air lines and the other bolts. And then that's really about all we got. So we've mopped it up and now Corey's getting ready to cut some metal. And we're gonna see how this really looks, which for those of you who are just now joining the page, it's not gonna be out of this one by one tubing is that what this is yep it's one by one and then i'm going to hand the phone over to hannah and she's going to show you guys why we decided to use the angle that we did which so, we like we like the angled look i don't want just a square box in the back but um there is a reason why we angled it the way we did so we're going to this all right we were originally just going to do a straight wall right here but well i'll just show you why I didn't really like the whole box idea, the box look, and not only that, my seats, that's why we went with that angle, because we're going to put the same type of seat um, in the Crosley, and that angle will be perfect, and it will slide either forward or backward um, right on that perfect angle. Instead of, if it was a straight wall, the seat is not going to be able to come back as far as it should. So that's why we went with that angle. And I think it'll look good in here. All right, so we've got it kind of figured out. Corey is um, marking on the pattern. Well, we've got our pattern and now he's tracing so we can save as much metal as we can, but I'll go over there and show you what he's doing. All right, homie, tell us all about it. All right, well, <laughs> meet Pat. This is gonna be our pattern. Oh, does Pat met Steve? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is going to be our upper frame route. This one's going to go up, and then this one is also going to go on this side. And then pretend that there's another one over here now, the one I just removed. And then it's going to go up. And then the axle is here. Oh. That was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> as soon as I did it, I'm like, I thought. Uh, I yeah. <laughs> Anyways, this is our frame rail. <laughs> we got to make this times three, and then once we get um, all of these stood up, we'll be able to find the distance in the center center frame rail. Quit laughing. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's just cut this. Okay. Okay, so here we have our giant C-notch. After a lot of trial and error, this is finally what we come up with. I was telling Hannah, like, after we get this in there, we'll be looking back and it's only... A 30-minute project? A, yeah, a 30-minute project. But you got to think of the long run. That's the hardest part about this stuff is the long run of, you know... She, she even thought about the seats where I didn't think about the seats. And then you got to think about the fuel tank. You got to think about... You know, the airbags, there's a lot going into it. Now, doing this, it's a 30 minute project, but it's taken us, you know, at least a couple or three hours trying to figure out what we're doing. But there's a lot of just sitting there thinking that we don't really want to record for you guys because that, I mean, it'd be boring for you to watch us just sitting there yeah. talking and thinking. So, um, this is what we've come up with after sitting there and thinking a while. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing now is setting this one on top of our jig, weld them all up good together, and then probably what I'll do in the long run, obviously not this video, but I'm going to have some cool little brackets or uh, gussets 
fish plates or whatever you want to call it just to make everything stronger and uh you know just safety is safety. on vehicles yeah safety on vehicles is number one safety in the shop clearly is number three i'm gonna put this in there show you guys how we're going to attach the link bars to this and then i'm not really sure where we're going with that after that but we're going to do something so let's uh, weld this together and i'm kind of getting tired mm, i can tell yeah so let's weld this together what would Tyler say? <laughs> Never be seen <laughs> on a galloping horse. I could take a square hmm. and square it. My OCD is kicking in as usual. I'm doing it this way so they're identical on both sides. Someone's gonna call me, I need a welding table. I have one, I just don't wanna go over there. Welding table? Well, a metal table or a bench. Oh, I say you do not have a welding table. <laughs> and if you're talking about the table over there, it's got so much crap on it, he couldn't even get to it. They don't need to know that. Uh-huh, I'll go show them. <laughs> you just stay right there. Are you getting cold? I don't want to burn my arm. Oh, look at you. We might move safety up to second place. Corey's been doing all the work and he says it's hot in here, but I'm nice and warm right in front of the fan. He's doing all the heavy lifting. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Your black eye. <laughs> All right, so we got our big C notches in, and then over here, I don't know if you can see over here. Can you see this bracket? Honey, yes. <laughs> All right, we got this little outrigger, and then our brackets here are going to hold our control arms, but the control arms, as you, as you can see, are kind of got a dog leg on them. They're crooked, and like the bushings are crooked. And, uh, but that's how they. Come. That's how that's how they're factory. Yeah, I was hoping just to set them in there and just keep trucking, but we're gonna need little bitty short arms on this thing. And you can cut these down, but no matter, they just kind of look goofy any way you put them. So that's where we're at now. I don't know if I'll order some the right stuff to do it. I was hoping just to kind of junkyard it together, kind of keep the cost down. But, I don't know. I'm gonna go in and think about it. <laughs> but you guys can kind of see what we got going. Um, so here, like I said, there's our frame upright. The bag will set here. And it'll push up against, push down on the axle. We're gonna have a bracket coming, like Hannah said earlier. So all that we're pretty tickled with, but we don't wanna set this in stone yet, because another thing is, we're gonna take a piece of sheet metal and go like this angle. Angle it the same as this, that way, because that's the same angle that the seat is. Yeah. But we're struggling with that because of the brackets over there. 
so. So really what we need now is different control arms, or I thought about making this bracket come up a little further, this one, so then it brings the control arm back here a little bit more. That would um, still be getting into the metal. Well, you can come sheet back metal. a couple inches, because the sheet metal will be here. Or just use what we got. It really, if we turn these around, you could get longer control arms, but then the piece of sheet metal runs into that. The bracket. Uh, runs into the bracket. Or does it? At yeah. that angle, it does. Yeah, and then, it, then you got a big triangle there. So, probably gonna call it a night. I'll let you guys know what we decide in the morning and go from there. Mm-hmm. All right, we're back. It's the next day and I'm not at the shop. I'm in a junkyard. My plan of attack is I want to find a set of lower control arms that are ready to go. I don't really have time to be waiting on parts and stuff like that. I just want to find something and put it in place and keep on going. So I'm at Jones Auto here in Orleans, Indiana. Currently I am in the Jeep section and I'm going to look for a set of control arms the control arms that I got yesterday for a Jeep JK won't work because they're bent a little funny, but a Jeep TJ has straight control arms. So I'm going to take some measurements and hopefully a Jeep TJ control arms will work. We got to measure them. I need like a 14 and a half control arm is what I ideally is what I need, but a shade shorter wouldn't be a bad thing. But um, I guess let's go shopping for the perfect part. First step is we gotta find a control arm. So we gotta rummage around through here, find one. Hey, there's one right there. So that looks like an upper rear control arm. Let's measure this baby and see what it is. Remember we need 14 and a half. That one's 13. So it's an inch and a half too short, but still might work with just the uh, slider brackets and stuff back that might work let's see what else we can find here is lower control arms these are look like 16 inches to the center there so that's going to shove the axle back in the crosley and also it's going to we could shove the axle back an inch or whatever inch and a quarter or move the front plate forward. I don't know, kind of just, if we could find another one of them, see what we got here. There we go, yes. Another one. There we go, one more. <laughs> Two more to go. Hannah, she's gonna be on me. She said, make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you're wearing a hat. <laughs> and, uh, or a toboggan. Right now I don't have either on, obviously. Hannah, she's smart. She's not uh, with me right now. It's too cold. She'd be out here fighting it with me, but she had a doctor's appointment she had to take care of today. So she's doing that. So I said, well, I'll go out there and find the parts we need. And by the time you get home, we can uh, start start on it again. JK, JK, here's a TJ here. Let's see what it's got. Never know, you might get lucky and the part's just laying in it. We got lucky twice now. Maybe we can get lucky again. All right, well, I struck out. I didn't find the other two here in the Jeep row. I'm gonna hop in the truck and they have a axle core pile. I'm gonna run over there and see if we can, maybe there's some laying there, I'm not sure. Hold up, <laughs> I about forgot what we came to get. I drove off without our parts. <laughs> I got taken off and I was like, crap, I didn't even throw them in the truck. We got them now, we're ready to go. Hi, right, here we are. I gotta find what I'm looking for. So I need a rear axle, we gotta start with that. 
find there's a jeep there's my control arm right there is that it yeah no that's not it that's wrong one never mind that's a front <laughs> my strike out here too I feel like everything over here has already been cut. All right, well, nothing there, but check this out. An old Cadillac hearse, I think it's sweet. Oddly, I do want a hearse. Uh, I'd like to have a little bit older one than that, like an old 50s model Cadillac, or right now there's a cool uh, uh, ah, what am I trying to say? Cadillac, my brain's frozen. A Cadillac, not a Cadillac, a um, Packard hearse on Marketplace, it's yellow. It's $4,000 though. I don't really need a $4,000 hearse just to sit there. All right, before I leave, I found one more spot to look for these control arms, so I'm gonna dig through these and see, see if we can get lucky and find those two more that we need. I'm in this pile. Hopefully you can find, hey, there's uh, those Dodge ones there. Golly, I should start here first. Hey, hey, there's one. That is definitely 100% one right there. Gotta find one more. <laughs> one more of these things and we've finally got them all. Should have started up here to begin with, probably. And I think this is the other one right here. 13 inches, oh yeah. That is it. Finally, we have the fourth one. I was actually about to give up. All right, I am back. I'm back from the junkyard, back in the shop, and Here's what we got. Here is our control arms that you just seen me pick up. I got them mocked up where I think this thing needs to be. Got our little outrigger here and our brackets. Everything looks really nice. So when this car airs up, it should air, this is all the way down. It'll air up four inches. And I think I got it figured out at four inches. These bars here will end up being straight like they're supposed to. So we'll be like this, the car airs up and it'll run them straight like this tape measure. That is the game plan. So I think everything is where it needs to be. So I guess uh, start welding it together and go from there. Also, I was thinking earlier in this video, we were talking about putting this bag over here like this, but now I think I might move it on this side because if I put it on this side, it's, getting, it's gonna be hard to get this bolt out. So I think we're gonna move it to this side, make the bracket, but none of that really matters right now because we're not at that point. But there's your up-to-date on what we ended up going with and let's get it welded up and move on to the next project. All right, so what we're gonna be doing now is going ahead and welding these brackets onto these ears. These ears get welded to our upright pieces, but if we go ahead and weld this ear onto the upright, we're not gonna be able to get a good weld around here. So we're gonna go ahead and simply just put this one to the outside there, weld it up in place, move this one over where it needs. After these are welded in place, we'll weld this ear and bracket assembly onto the side of our frame rail that we just welded in there and move on forward to put our control arms and weld it to the axle and all that fun stuff. But we're making progress, so that's good.
Looks good. Well, you go ahead and do your other downside yeah. so that it'll be easier for you to weld, and then you can go ahead and do the flip it over bottom. That looks really good. Okay. I've been working on it in my dreams. <laughs> good. Well, keep working on it. No, I'm just kidding. You're doing good. <laughs> I didn't mean like, I meant keep working on it as keep working on it, not you're doing bad. Oh, Here, clean your tip off. You may get it. Uh -huh. Hold on. Yeah. There. Get in back there. <laughs> you got like a rat tail here. I'll put this one on the other side. All right. Now you're good. You're doing I'm really, really good. Proud of I'm proud of you. Thanks. Well, we've got them welded up. They're sliding. <laughs> My hand. <laughs> we've got them welded up, and we're going to take them outside to cool off, along with Corey's sweet tea. Uh, it's right outside the door there. Shouldn't take too long. Very good. Alright, while we're waiting on our parts to cool down, we're going to go ahead and mount the body to the frame. We're going to be using these little standoff gussets with these putts on there so let's go ahead and weld them on there and then time we get them located we just got the car forward backward side to side we had it really close to begin with but now it is right where it needs to be so let's forever hold its place right there okay <laughs> Corey just drug the welder through my pile <laughs> it's a we're trying to work here yes in a clean environment all right this puck is going on the bottom of this, just like that. And to find that hole, I figured I could come up here just like this, run this square like that, take a Sharpie. There's that, that's uh, three inches, so inch and a half. We're gonna put a hole right here, and that'll fit it right here, but under there. That's the plan of attack. Okay. Oh. I might have to go get new pants on because I kept ripping them on the welder earlier. You can make them into some cool jorts. Yeah, I look like Steve Darnell. No, no. With how loud everything is in the shop, when we're old, we're not gonna be able to hear, but we are gonna be riding around in cool things. <laughs> we we wear earplugs actually. Airplugs. We wear, yeah, it is. It's airplugs. We <laughs> we wear <laughs> airplugs. Earplugs. <laughs> earplugs. Okay, I want to show you guys proof that my wife's trying to take over my shop. She's got a daggone on magnet stuck to the stove with a Scentsy burner in it. It's a wonderful idea, so I'm not opposed to it. Trying to make it smell good in here? It smells good already. Mm -hmm. I got this done. If you want to go get those brackets and we'll start welding them back on the side. No, it's so cold. Look at that. Baby's on there, yeah. snugged up, in rubber. 
Alright, let's go get our brackets welded them on and see if we start finishing up this video. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it shouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter? Shouldn't matter which one goes where, I don't think. Well, Lay them on the ground and I'll figure it out. It's like this. Everything is in place. I put this one by one square tubing in here to make sure that these ears here weren't going left or right any, but they are perfectly straight on both sides here. So now that everything is in place, 10 inches from here up, 10 inches from here up. Everything should be right on the money. So now we can go ahead and weld the ears to the frame and then put our link bars back on and then take them to the axle and go from there. Are you going in? So now, Corey, did you want to show us where the drive shaft goes again? No. <laughs> Welcome inside the car. Corey, just show them what we got going on here. It's, it's beautiful in here. <laughs> All right, there we have it. We got our upper and lower control arms on this thing. Again, these are upper rear control arms for say a 98 Jeep, uh, Jeep Wrangler. So that's what we ended up using. We have to get our pinion angle right yet. This pinion angle here needs to move up a shade. The drive or the transmission is way down, but I can tell just by looking at it, this rear end has to go up a little bit. Once we figure all that out, we'll weld our brackets into place, but there you have it. Everything, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. You happy with it? Yeah. I just can't wait to drive it. I'm still kind of debating on cutting this bar here out. It don't necessarily have to be in, so we could cut it here and cut it here, but I might just leave it. The only benefit of taking it out right now would be so the axle could come out, but the axle right now don't have to come out, so I might just cross that road when we get there. And also, I mean, it ain't gonna hurt nothing with that bar being in there, and I think I'll just leave it for now. So, like I said, next step is get the pinion angle, but that's not gonna be tonight. We're gonna go ahead and hop out of here, wrap up this video. I know I'm tired and hungry. Tired and hungry? Yeah, I'm too angry for me to be both of them. You're gonna be hangry? Yeah. You said clean up, but you didn't carry anything out. I carried myself I'm out. I'm about to call you a name. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I am trying not to fall in all this mess. I am working right here. No, you said we were done. So. Yeah, we're done, so I'm cleaning up. You have to make it. That don't look like you're cleaning. <laughs> all right, so that's gonna be the end of this video. Like always, we truly, truly appreciate you all watching and following along with our crazy adventures and our little, our little bickering in the garage. <laughs> uh, bickering. Bickering. I was like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like she said, that's gonna be the end of this video. We got this box in the mail, and these things are really cool. Check this one out. It's a little piston and it's carved out. Austin, thank you so much. You can yes, I love it. Okay, this one has little stitches that just screams me. And he sent some cards, so you can pause that and look him up. Because let me tell you, 
He is very talented. They have, if I could just redo the whole house, I would have it all done in his custom work. He has like lamps out of oil and gas cans. It is really cool. So look that up on Facebook. This is really cool. And also he got us this cool little Pennsylvania license plate that is a business card holder. So thank you very much, Austin. We truly appreciate it. And real quick, I'm gonna call you out on something, Austin. After seeing your semi, which I remember talking to you at the Rod Run, and I do remember you telling me or showing me pictures of this, it's your fault that we went Monday to look at semis, and uh, now we're wanting to build a semi. So that's on you. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of other things we need to build, but now he's wanting to build a semi. Yeah. But anyway, so before we just keep rambling on, we appreciate you, Austin. Thank you so much. Uh, next week might get interesting. So we have... Um, Normally, we're, go we're going to get something, but normally we have to bring a trailer. This one, we're hoping not to. The people we're getting it from says it runs and drives. That Neither don't. one of us know how to drive it, but we're going to try well, to make it out. We should probably, to be honest with you guys, we should probably take a trailer, but we're going to try to attempt to drive this vehicle three hours back home and neither of us know how to drive. So you can be the judge of who's better at that. You, oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been wanting to build a, another one. Let's just say that. And I'll leave it at that. So there's you a, a pretty good hint that we built one, but I kind of think it's time for us to build our own eventually. Very good. And then, um, Maybe after we get that project and the other 38 other projects we have, we can start on our semi that I want to, mm -hmm. that I want. So anyways, that's going to be the end, of the end of this video. And also I do want to leave you with one more thing. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, I'm looking for like a small short bus or a small little box van. So if you guys have anything like that, let me know. Cause I want to make a little merch truck out of it. I'll, I'll work on that uh, when I have free time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, guys, have a great night, and we'll catch you guys on the next. Oh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, so we'll see you next Wednesday at 6. And uh, we won't be in the shop. We're taking you on a venture. We'll see you there. Hold on. You are blurrier than a blurry. You said I'm blurry. Not now. Oh. Welcome into the car. <laughs> all right, there you go. You guys finally. I finally had it. Caught it on video. Golly. Yeah. What? That thing. That yeah. What about my poor thumb? I'm saying that's not good. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get that hit? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Hickles. Yeah, safety on vehicles is number one. Safety in the shop clearly is number three. But... <laughs> Yeah, first is God, then me, and then safety, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't get any cool views because we got the butt crack hanging out. Yeah. All right, so I think this. It's <laughs> All right, it's goodbye for now. Uh, this is going to be the end of this video. Oh, so. I was cleaning my ear. All right, yeah. Well, you might as well pick your nose. All right, are you ready? Yeah.